you know, Coach, I'm going to have to just go on the fly. So whatever you got there, or tell Brendan. Works. John, you can go on back top also. No, that's all right. Thanks. That's all right. Because I think the wire's bad. There it goes out again. Yeah, I wonder if it gets struck by lightning the other night. Well, it, it, we had problems with this a couple weeks ago. Did it really? Yeah. Yes. Check it, check it now and see if it's okay. Test one, two, test one, two, test. Audio okay? Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Uh, Brendan Marshall. Brendan, give him a test there. Yeah. Test one, two, Brendan Marshall. Here at Soccer. Everyone can sleep, rise. Move your caps for the plane of the National Anthem. Okay. Oh, okay. Very good. Okay, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just uh, doing the national anthem right now. We're set to go. All right, we'll do the starting lineup for today's contest, starting with the Boone Grove. In goal, number one, Michaela Boatwright. Number two, Elizabeth Barton. Brandon, just do a test right through there. Test one, two, three. That's it. Number six, Olivia McCafferty. Test, test, test. Number eight. Macy Miller. Number 11, I Rachel Cantwell. I do not have a crowd mic. I think it's a cord myself. Number 13, Emily Martinez. Test, test, test. One, two, one, two. Test, test, test. Okay, Number we're ready 15, to go. Sarah All right, thanks, Brown. Dave. Appreciate it. Number 23, Allie Hill. Number 25, Sarah Martinez. Live from Union Township at Wheeler High School, RRSN.com. Number 26, in conjunction with Regional Samantha Radio Sports Wolf. presents the 2013 Boys and Girls High School Soccer Martin. Season. Where this morning and this afternoon, we've got a Boys and Girls doubleheader for you. The first game of the doubleheader will feature the Jordan Wheeler Franklin. and Boone Grove girls. Now the home and then team, in the nightcap, the we'll flip it over on the boys' side of things, and it'll be the Wolves taking on the Bearcats here. 
on rrsn.com. We want to thank our sponsors that are making one, today's broadcast Captain, possible. They include Leaders Auto Service Center, right Center of Portage. They're located at 6436 Central Avenue in Portage. Give them a call today for all your auto needs at 219-763-1782. Also, the Amherst Asylum, located at 228 South 500 West in Valparaiso, 4.5 miles south of Route 3 on North County Road and 500 West. And uh, they have, um, you can Number check 12, them out on Facebook Katie as well as www.amherstasylum.com. We also want to thank Jackson. the Wheeler High School Number Soccer 20, Boosters for Warren stepping up big Bradsky. time and helping us the with uh, the broadcast out here today. Let's take a look Lindsay at the starting Martins. lineups. First of all, for the Boone Grove Wolves, they are coached by Chad Rago. Uh, they will have uh, their lineup setting up as follows. Up top will be number six, Olivia McCafferty. She'll be joined by striker Emily Martinez up top, number 13. Samantha Wolf, number 26, will also be at a forward position. The midfielders on the left side, number two, will be Elizabeth Barton, a junior. Allie Hill and Sarah Brown will be central midfielders for the Wolves. Uh, they come in with a record of uh, six and two on the season at right mid will be a freshman Emily Barton and in the back line will be left defender Rachel Cantwell the right fullback will be Macy Miller a senior and in the middle will be Sarah Martinez a sophomore in between the pipes for the Wolves dressed in their blue road uniforms with the white uh, trim and numbers will be Mickey Boatwright number one a senior 40 saves on the season with a shutout in nine games she's given up 17 goals and a 1.89 goals against average Meanwhile, the Wheeler Bearcats will shape up as follows. They will have Lauren Fratsky along with Tara Phillips up top, number 20 and 8, respectively. The midfielder will have Katie Reif, a freshman, along with Shannon Eaton and Jr., Lanny Eaton, a junior, and Kelly Fry, number 12, will be at right mid. The back line will be Maddie Crowder along with Emily Jackson, Christy Hansen, and Marissa Sosa. Katie Spore will be between the pipes. She's a freshman. Seven goals against only on the season for a 0 0.64 goals against average. The Wheeler Bearcats will be moving from left to right on your laptop in their white home uniforms with the orange number and trim. Boone Grove Wolves in the opposite direction. Wheeler coming in with a record of 9-1-1 one, one on the season. They are undefeated at 5-0 in the Northwest Indiana Soccer Conference. The Boone Grove Wolves checking in at 6-3, and three, and they are 3-1 and one in the NWISC. And a throw in now off the far side by the Wolves looking on the play for Olivia McCafferty. McCafferty trying to turn the afterburners now on the right wing on the play. spin a move, throws it out to the 18. Doesn't quite get through uh, the offense on the play. And now the Bear, Bearcats come back with Kelly Fry. Her pass to Spore is uh, intercepted on the play at the defensive end by Boone Groves, number 25, Sarah Martinez. Martinez now with her back to the offensive player, Kratzky, here in the defensive third. Jacob doing a great job on the camera work for us. Jacob, if you can zoom in a little bit more on the action. There you go. Good job. As now the centering pass comes in at the 18. Knocked down nicely on the play by number 10. That's Shannon Eden. But they're going to call a violation. And with that, I bring in my broadcast partner, Brendan Marshall. And Brendan, welcome to uh, Northwest Indiana Soccer. It's been an adventurous morning, but welcome aboard. Thank you very much. Coming from Illinois, uh, it's different here in Indiana. The air even feels different. <laughs> yes, I tell you. And uh, obviously the uh, the directions are different and everything, but we got that all straightened out, and uh, we're able to uh, hook up with you and get over here and get the, the broadcast on. So uh, we're looking forward to a great doubleheader here. we got glorious weather here today. That, that is true. It is nice and sunny this morning. It's warmed up a little bit. And I'd say Boone Grove has the wind advantage here in the first half as the flag flagpole on the right side is really blowing um, in the left side direction, so we'll see if they take advantage of it here. McCafferty now on the right wing with a spinorama move. Centering pass is intercepted by Spore, so not really an official shot that time as she centered that ball off a, a steep angle. So these ball clubs are both coached by very successful coaches as now Fratsky gets it off to the right side on the play looking for Tara Phillips. We're down to 37-25, remaining in a scoreless first half between Wheeler and Boone Grove. Centering pass nicely done over to Fry. Her shot's knocked down into the fence, and then another shot by Phillips. Goes right up the elevator shaft and is corralled by Martinez for the Boone Grove defense. Good job by the blue and white there on the defensive end. 
So right now, as uh, Brendan mentioned, Boone Grove will try to take advantage of this wind at their back. The thing is, it really was uh, blowing during the national anthem. I thought the flagpole was going to fall down. So I think uh, Boone Grove will have the advantage, but we heard in the previous uh, soccer broadcast about a week ago, the team that may actually have the advantage in a morning game like this with the wind is the team that it's going for in the second half, and that would be Wheeler. Yeah, if they can, uh, of course, uh, capitalize here against the wind and then get that uh, advantage in the second half, definitely more power to the Bearcats. Defensive third on the play, knocked down nicely by Marissa Sosa, but she got her pocket picked nicely by Boone Groves, number 13, Emily Martinez. Her centering pass again, looking for the dangerous McCafferty. Olivia coming in, trying to get the left foot free on the play. Couldn't get any mustard on the ball. Now she tries a right-footed shot. Good defense in the back line there by Maddie Crowder, the yeah, sophomore the left fullback, coming back and filling in the hole for the Bearcats. Number one, Christy Hanson with the kick. So now Christy Hansen will go with the goal kick here for the Bearcats. So we're just underway. The Boone Grove Wolves on a two-game winning streak in the blue and white with wins over Coutts 5-2 to two, and then uh, Hanover Central by a count of 7-2. to two. They've outscored their opponents this season 36-17. to 17. Keep in mind that second half of the doubleheader will flip it over on the boys' side of things, but right now the Lady Wolves try to get something going in the midfield third. They can't get it to Martinez. Goes over the near touchline for a throw-in for the Wolves. And uh, very young teams, I say, coming in. Boone Grove has only two seniors in the starting lineup. That's uh, obviously McCafferty and Macy Miller in the back line. And uh, Wheeler has got the freshman goaltender, a few sophomores. A lot of freshmen and sophomores featured in this game and that's nice to see you know young teams that these coaches will be seeing for a few years now yeah they're uh, they're definitely going to be uh, around in the area as far as the elite and the thing that's impressive uh brandon is that these two teams are sectional champions from last year and lost a boatload of talent boone grove lost two of the top shop shooters in the area and Paige aguilera along with mckenzie starcevich both over 20 goals last season as seniors they moved on and graduated after the uh, sectional championship game. And uh, then, uh, meanwhile, Wheeler coming off a sectional championship as well. And they had losses of Alexa Fratsky, their striker, along with Haley Lovison and their fine goalkeeper, Kim Moscovich, off a 17-3 and season. So both of these teams reloading, so to speak. And doing pretty well at the start of the season. I'm sure the coaches are... Happy with the production based on uh, how young the teams are. Now Phillips looking for a backdoor cut that time to Fry. Nice job defensively out there by uh, Boone Grove's uh, Sarah Brown. She kicks it over the near touchline to throw in now for the Bearcats. Cross on the play to the far side. Trying to get it over there now to Katie Reif on the left wing. Her centering pass at the 18 to Lanny Eaton. Lanny Eaton looking for a cross, and Boone Grove has the answer. Good job of intercepting by Emily Jackson in the middle of the field now for the Bearcats. Go off to the far side on the play now with a spinorama attempt by Kelly Fry, intercepted by Boone Grove. 33-36 remaining in a scoreless first half. Is now Boone Grove just plays some long ball there and uh, trying to take advantage of the win, but they're trying to set up McCafferty up high, Brendan, along with Emily Martinez, the freshman. And, of course, McCafferty is the one, along with Emily, that has the gaudy statistics up top. <laughs> they uh, have combined for a lot of goals so far this season, but uh, so far in the first, 12, first uh, seven minutes of this game, it's been on the Boone Grove end, or the Boone Grove defensive end. And so they're trying to turn that around here and you want to get as many shots as you can with the wind at your back. Shannon Eden now will do the honors the junior with the free kick opportunity. It goes over the midfield stripe right now and it's corralled on the left wing by the Wolves. Picked up over there by number two, that's Liz Barton. But she got her pocket picked by the Bearcats. They come back now on the left wing to the ever dangerous Lauren Fratsky. Here's her centering pass into the mixer and a good job by Mickey Boatwright to come out and intercept the cross. And Reader's Auto Service Center Portage has been family owned and operated for 50 years. They feature award winning and complete auto service and repair, including air conditioning, brakes, suspension, computerized alignment and engine diagnostics. They're also state certified and admissions and 24-hour towing is available. Their auto technicians are ASC certified with access to the latest technologies 
in diagnostic Keep equipment. Stop by the facility that includes 10 mechanical bays and a Valvoline Express Care for fast and friendly service. The front office includes a big screen television, a cappuccino machine, and a slushy machine. Readers is located at 6436 Central Avenue in Portage, or give them a call today at 219-763-1782. Ball now headed up the elevator shaft on the play on the right wing by Phillips. Tara looking for some help in the midfield third from Kelly Fry, but the Wolves control on the left wing. Throw in now for Boone Grove as they get it into Martinez. The freshman now trying to get it over to McCafferty on the wing. Instead gets intercepted by her teammate Samantha Wolf. Pressuring now is Allie Hill on the left wing, and she will force a throw in now for Boone Grove. Comes in on the play now outside the 18. Good job by Jackson to get her toe on the soccer ball. And now Lauren Fratsky comes back in the midfield third with her line shoes moving from right to left. She slams right in to Rachel Cantwell. Rachel doing a great job of stopping that progress for a Bearcat throw in. Coming up on 10 minutes remaining, uh, gone here in the first half of action. And Weaver picks up a little bit more real estate here on the near touchline for Kelly Fry's throw in. Number 12 now goes outside the box, trying to get it in there to Shannon Eden. Eden was banged up a little bit against Griffith. Now an opportunity here and a little bit too much helium under the soccer ball on the shot by Randy Eden. He was trying to go upper 90 far side. Randy. It's tough to get some shots inside the box, especially. Number 25, Sarah Martinez was a kick for Boone Grove. Wheeler has been attacking him, and that's been the best opportunity they've had. And you want to try to get closer than that, uh, especially with the wind. It's hard to see where that shot's going to go. Amherst As Asylum is a haunted attraction that's located at 228 South, 500 West in Valparaiso, 4.5 miles south of Route 30 on North County Road, 500 West. Check them out on the web at amherstasylum.com. They're also at facebook.com backslash Elmhurst Asylum. And now an opportunity for the Bearcats at the 18, and the shot goes past the far post on the opportunity there for Tara Phillips and the Bearcats. October 4th and 5th, along with 11th and 12th, 13th, 18th, and 19th, they will be open, as well as the 20th, the 24th, and the 25th through the 27th, as well as October 31st and November 1st. Uh, we've got uh, some cards that were given out here at the ball game today. Get $2 off with the card on your admission to Amherst Asylum Haunted Attraction, and that's in Valparaiso. Halloween's coming up. Yes, it is. The leaves will be flying here pretty soon, Brendan, and it, uh, it's going by fast. Now Emily Jackson's pass for the Bearcats is knocked down, but a good job of retrieval by Kelly Fry. Fry trying with a potential corner on the plane. She got herself a corner. She deflected it off of Cantwell. First corner of the match the goes to the Wheeler to the Bearcats. Bearcats. Who's kicking it? Number eight, Tara Phillips with the kick. Tara Phillips, number eight, will do the honors on the play for the Wheeler Bearcats. Gets it into the box, a shot, and a goal! Bearcats so take the, the lead Bearcats. on the corners. Tara number Phillips 20. got it right over to Lauren Fratsky. Lauren Fratsky and the dynamic the duel is able to ring the cash register on the play. The goal is going to come at 11.31, and the Bearcats lead it 1-0. Just exactly how you set it up. You get it right in the middle of the net and have your striker try to get ahead on it, and Spoon Grove not checking, not checking her out there. And it's pitch and catch, easy goal. So Fratsky on the campaign now picks up the score. That's her eighth goal of the year. Phillips gets her ninth assist of the campaign there, and I tell you what, Brendan, you really couldn't have uh, drawn that up any better. Exact, exactly right. Uh, just easy, easy pitch and catch. Not even any um, rebound or anything. Just right there. Thought maybe they would get her on a potential handball there, but uh, they did say that she was able to deflect it off of uh, the, the body there. As now Fratsky comes back, looking again for Phillips at the right side corner. Nice job defensively out there by Samantha Wolf to knock it over the near touch line. Right for Wheeler. Oh, check that. That is actually uh, Sarah Martinez, a sophomore. Kelly Fry with the throw so in. Kelly Fry now will go with a throw in here. 27-44 remaining in the first half, and the Wheeler girls with a one to nothing lead over Boone Grove. 
Emily Jackson now with some physical play, and she's going to get called for a push, and that will be a free kick opportunity now for Boone Groves, number 13, Emily Martinez. Yeah, the ball has been in the Boone Grove goal end, and it's, or, uh, yeah, the, the uh, Wolves are going to have to turn it around, hopefully, because uh, the wind is at their back now, and they got to try to take advantage of this to try and at least tie the game, but try to take a lead. Now midfield third on the play for the Bearcats. It's picked up by Shannon Eden, the ta talented midfielder. She lost control, and now Boone Grove comes back again with McCafferty as she gets it over on the play to Macy Miller. M squared lost it over the far touch line. As we mentioned, uh, Chad Rago, the head coach of Boone Grove, coming in at 120 wins, 49 losses, and five ties. That's a 704 winning percentage in eight seasons over at Boone Grove High School. Played varsity soccer in high school. He was an assistant to Brian Sherwin, the boys coach here at Boone Grove, uh, for four years before taking the girls' position. Now Martinez with an opportunity. Good job of tipping it away by Christy Hansen, and she gets it back to Maddie Crowder. Again, here's Miller for Boone Grove, looking again on the left wing. They were trying to go back door that time to the Wolves on the left wing. And now this ball comes over here. I'm trying to figure out. we got to try to find out who number 28 is, Brendan. I'm not sure who that is. On Boone Grove, it's Emily Barton, the freshman. Okay, very good. Appreciate that. So she's 28. Yep, and uh, she's normally a sub, sub, but Amy Guerrero not in action, at least at the start. So Emily Barton taking the place in the midfield. And Samantha Wolf moving up from midfield to the right forward. Emily uh, Elizabeth Barton with a goal and an assist this season for the junior. Wheeler with the one nothing lead. If you're just joining us on the corner kick off the foot of the talented uh, right uh, midfielder there, Tara Phillips, getting it over to her teammate, Lauren Fratsky, and the sophomore made no mistake about it, her eighth goal of the season, and that came at 11.31 of the match. Got a foul called now on Wheeler, so a free kick opportunity here for the Wolves, and it's Allie Hill with the toss. Knocked up the elevator shaft. Martinez trying to get in there. Now McCafferty trying to get the right foot free on the wing. Olivia, the leading scorer for the Wolves, she tried to do a little spinorama move that time, Brendan, and uh, was trying to create either a cross or a corner, and she got neither. Yeah, goal kick yeah, good job Wheeler. Wheeler to get to the defenders and the Number one, Chris back Hansen there in the, the box, and no... No good opportunity there for Boone Grove. Sarah Brown is now going to come into the game uh, sophomore, and she will come in to replace Elizabeth Barton at the uh, midfield position Number on the seven. outside. Number seven, Tara Keenan into the game for Boone Grove. It's actually Tara Keenan. She's 77 on my roster, but they knocked off a digit. <laughs> so the sophomore Tara Keenan in there now. They never inform us correctly. <laughs> try to try to keep us in the dark as much as possible, I guess. Now midfield third to Shannon Eden in the midfield area for the Bearcats. Looking for the dynamic duo of Phillips along with Fratsky. Good job by Boone Grove to thwart that foray. Eden now comes back with the left-footed cross onto the wing. Nicely done. Good ball movement here by the orange and green. Fratsky outside the 18 now looking for some midfield support on the play. Here's a shot on the play and a save. On there by the goalkeeper for the, 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 the uh, Boone Grove Wolves, and that is the keeper, Mickey Boltwright. Yeah, great ball movement as well as player movement there for Wheeler. Unfortunately for them, they really couldn't get uh, that good a shot and easy save for Michaela Boltwright. 23-37 remaining here in the first half. Here's an opportunity for Phillips. Great job defensively once again by Sarah Martinez, the sophomore, is playing a whale of a game on the left wing. Now good communication by the Wolves as they let it go right through to the keeper. Today's uh, doubleheader is also brought to us by Wheeler High School as well as the boys and girls soccer boosters for both Boone Grove High School as well as Wheeler High School. And we want to thank uh, the boosters, especially from Wheeler High School, for their support of the Bearcats throughout this season. Now here's Tara Phillips trying to do a nutmeg on the play. Cantwell fanned on it. Now Phillips trying to carry on it. Again, Martinez is there to kick it over the near touch line. Throw in on the play for Kelly Fry and the Bearcats. Enter the game for the Bearcats. Now number 24, Brian. Alexa Prashak. Alexa Prechak, now the sophomore, number 24, will come into the ball game, and she will give Katie Reif a break on the left midfield spot. 
and she's uh, coming off the bench with some production, four goals on the season. Yeah, we'll see how she does there at that uh, left uh, midfield position. Against the win here as the Bearcats were able to break through that uh, that breeze there with 22-24 remaining here in the so half. Emily Jackson now looking for Fransky, knocked down nicely by Keenan for the Wolves. Ooh, and now Emily Jackson with a hard uh, collision on the play with Sam Wolf there, and Samantha got the worst of that one. And she didn't have to lie on the, on the ground and, and uh, sell it because they called it immediately. Yes, she didn't have to worry about getting the uh, 9.5 from the Russian judge on that one. <laughs> Now over the far touch line on the play, it's McCafferty. Olivia will go with the throw in down the hill here at the Union Township, so she'll get some momentum going. Keenan's outside the box. Instead, she goes on the play to Sam Wolf. Now they center it on the play for Martinez. Nice job defensively by the Bearcats. Great spin around the move there in the midfield third by the Bearcats, number 10, Shannon Eden. Pick back up now, and a shot on the play deflects off the defender, and Spore had to be a Johnny on the spot on that one as Katie came up with her first save out here today. And I guess you could touch that with the hands even though it went off the defender because it wasn't an intentional kick. Now off the left side, it's McCafferty. Play some physical soccer now on the right wing. Olivia now trying to work her magic on the far side with a stop and go move. Trying to get past Crowder for a potential cross. Good job by Maddie there. She played great physical soccer and got her off the ball. Down to 20-57 remaining in the first half. The Bearcats with a 1-0 lead in this one. They can get the ball past. They have some numbers, but unfortunately it's kicked out of bounds. Yeah, good job there by Shannon Eden on the run, but they say that she actually kicked it over the far touch line, and that will result in a throw-in here for the Wolves. Yeah, if she could have gotten past that, they had a three-on-two there, and it's a good opportunity for the second goal as we're halfway through the first half. Number eight, now. Millie Macy into the game for Boone Grove. Sarah Brown out of the lineup now for the Wolves. Midfield third now for the Bearcats. Wheeler moving from left to right on your laptop on the play. Looking into the corner now on the uh, four-way there for Kelly Fry. Once again, the ever-present Rachel Cantwell knocks it over the near touchline, throwing for the Bearcats. Halfway through the first half, a 1-0 lead for Wheeler. A quick one-timer just past the far post. I don't know if Boatwright even saw that one, Brendan. Oh, I don't know if the defenders... Uh even saw that coming either. She just got wide open there off the throw in, and as you say, good one time or good opportunity there. And that was a Lauren Fratsky, the sophomore, trying to get her second goal of the ball game. Number 25. Brian Sarah Murray Martina is the head coach for the goes. Wheeler Bearcats. He's in his 14th season as a head coach. He spent 10 years down at Muncie Central High School, then two years over with the Laporte Slicers. He's in his second season now with the Wheeler Bearcats. Midfield third on the play. Wheeler controlling things right now in the midfield, and that's been the key to their success so far. Aaron Ball now is going to go into the box, and it'll be retrieved back there by Boone Grove. Good job by the Bearcats' defense not to let anybody get behind them. Uh, Martinez was there in, at midfield kicking the ball, and nobody was breaking free. Yeah, Martinez has uh, played very solidly. Now an opportunity here on a worm burner from the left side on the play by Shannon Eden, but not a lot of mustard on that one. Be a goal kick for Boone Grove. Yeah, not much Number chance. 25, of Sarah Martinez with the kick. And just kicking it over there. And In for the Bearcats, number five, Emma Heinhold. Go out of bounds. Emma Heinhold has come into the game. She is a freshman forward. She has four goals and two assists on the season, so another more production off the bench for Brian Murray. So we're down now. We're down now to 17-17 uh, remaining here in the first half of play. One nothing lead for the Wheeler Bearcats. Throwing now just outside the 18 on the play. Lauren Fratsky knocks it down. Now a shot right up the elevator shaft, and it goes over the crossbar there by Shannon Eden. She got underneath that one that time, Brendan, and the wind really knocked it down. <laughs> it was a high ball there. I thought uh, Michaela Boatwright was going to call for a fair catch. <laughs> yeah, she, right in front of the uh, football practice field here, so definitely uh, apropos here for the scene. 
Midfield third now for the for the Wolves. They try to get something going now. Knocked down to the defense by the Wolves. And now picked back up by Fratsky. Her pass is knocked down nicely by the Wolves, number 22, out there. Now they go off the far side. Again, trying to get it to Fratsky on the wing. Also, uh, uh, Prechek out there with the four goals off the bench now. She did get her foot on the ball over to Eden, picked up by Tara Phillips. One That's time now outside the 18 on the play. They go on to the right wing trying to get it over to Kelly Fry, but uh, too many blue shirts over there at the 18. Wheeler playing some good possession soccer right now as they get it to Phillips with a header. One time they try to go give and go, and Martinez was there. That could have been dangerous. Emily Jackson now with the header, knocked down nicely by the Wolves, Emily Martinez. And now Corral with a nice ground ball attack to Lauren Fratsky. They move uh, Lauren Fratsky now, Brandon, to a midfield spot and put Prechek up top. Ground ball attack on the wing now, picked up by Kelly Fry. Fry trying to get by a Wolves defender here off the left side, but the momentum of the ball goes over the near touch line and a throw in for Boone Grove. Chad Ragow is getting set to go back to the bench now as they will allow the substitutions to come in. Uh, exiting the lineup for Boone Grove is Samantha Wolf. And also coming in as well is uh, number 15, that's Sarah Brown. Bree Kraus. Bree Kraus checking into the ball game. Number she's 15, number 27. Said that. She's not on the yep. Now here's McCafferty, central midfield area. Good job by Crowder along with uh, Hansen to get in there. As Maddie playing some physical soccer on the left wing, it does deflect off a prey check over the far touchline right by Coach Murray. Throw in for the Wolves. Again, looking for McCafferty. They definitely know where Olivia is on the field, Brendan. Number six is being marked up big time. Goal story. You gotta find a way to get open. Now Phillips with a spin around the move. She's trying to look for prey check. She's got Fry on the right wing. Good job by Kelly to fill in the void on the play at the 18. She lets it go, but it goes off the side of her foot. It will result in a boom roll. No kick. Reader's Auto Service Center of Portage has been family owned and operated for 50 years. They feature award-winning and complete auto service and repair, including air conditioning, brakes, suspension, computerized alignment, and engine diagnostics. They're also state certified, and admissions and 24-hour towing is available. Their auto technicians are ASC certified with access to the latest technologies and diagnostic equipment. Stop by their facility that includes 10 mechanical bays and a Valvoline Express care for fast and friendly service. The front office includes a big screen television along with a, a cappuccino machine and a slushy machine. Readers is located at 6436 Central Avenue in Portage or give them a call at 219-763-1782. 17, or check that 14-13 remaining here in the first half of play. one nothing lead for the Wheeler Bearcats in this girls soccer match. Now Krause for Boone Grove heads it on the play, trying to get the counter. She deflected it. Good job of coming up by Katie Spore there, Brennan. She no, recognizes no, there could have been trouble. Exactly. Christy Hansen missing the kick there and a good opportunity for 27. Now midfield third on the play to Emma Heinold, the freshman who's into the ball game. Nice one touch looking on the play in the midfield area for Tara Phillips. Once again, Cantwell is back there at that left position. Now a shot and a save by Boatwright on the opportunity there off the foot of Katie Reif off the right wing for the Bearcats. Yeah, Boatwright has been active in this first half as her team's uh, moving a little slower, I'd say, than Wheeler. They, uh, you know, these, mo these morning games, uh, you wonder who's waking up more, and so far it's been Wheeler, but... Boone Grove is starting to attack a little bit and trying to get some opportunities. Cadwall comes back against her numerical counterpart. That's Katie Reif here on the right wing. Katie with the steal, coming into the box with the left foot. Good slide tackle by Cadwell. And then she gets picked up nicely by Martinez on the back side. Emily Jackson now with a ground ball attack. Beautiful move by Lauren Frasky. Left footed crossover shot on the plate to the near side. Nobody home for the Bearcats there. A nice crossover there by Frasky. 
but they were trying to stay onside there, Brandon, did not get call for the offside. Yeah, trying to set up Emma Heinold, Heinold right in the middle and just couldn't get a toe on that one, right? went right out of bounds. Boy, talented move there by number 20, Lauren Fratsky, the sophomore for the Bearcats. 12-26 remaining in the first half, 1-0 lead for Wheeler. Boone Grove tried to get something going offensively here, and they do so with Martinez. Ground ball attack, nicely done into the midfield third on the play, but Emily Jackson is there. Now back to Lauren. Fratsky with a crossover dribble drive on the play, looking for Tara Phillips. Back right over to Lauren, one toucher on the play. Yeah, good point, Brandon. They certainly Shot had life here on the wing, not being marked up. Back in the game for Wheeler, number seven, Lanny Eaton. I mean, it number was on the other side of Rachel the field where the ball was, but boy, if somebody could have seen her and just gotten the ball over there. Lanny Eaton, a junior midfielder into the ball game, along with Rachel Metzger, a sophomore, getting her first action here this afternoon. Amherst Asylum is a haunted attraction located at 228 South 500 West in Valparaiso. They're located 4.5 miles south of Route 30 on North County Road, 500 West. Check them out on the web at www.amherstasylum.com. That's amherstasylum.com. Get $2 off with the card here if you're at the doubleheader here today. Dates open go from October 4th to November 1st at the Amherst Asylum in Valparaiso. Opportunity here for Boone Grove here on the in throw. Boone Grove, they number can, seven. Oh, they're making a substitution. I was about to say, if they can get a quick pace going, you try to get the ball downfield before the midfielders get back for Wheeler. But substitution number seven is going to come into the game for Boone Grove. Who that is, I have no idea because she isn't on the roster either. I know, we've had a lot of numerical snafus out here this morning. Oh, it's uh, Tara Keaton. She was originally yes. 77 on our roster. She was a backup midfielder. And she is in the left midfield slot here. Nice ball. Wheeler's going to take the ball just behind Katie Reef, but she'll gather it, try to make a move as they try to set somebody else up here in the middle. Good job by Boatwright as that ball went over the uh, defender there off the foot of Shannon Eden, the junior. And, uh, good job by Mickey that time. Mickey has done a great job in between the pipes for the Wolves. Came in with 40 saves and 1.89 goals against average. And now she's using that win to her advantage. Midfield third to Martinez. Picked up on the play once again by Emily. Looking for the return pass on the play from McCafferty who's been marked up here this afternoon. Throw in now for Boone Grove. Yeah, and even the goal against Boat Wright this morning, can't really say it was her fault. That uh, player wasn't marked up, and I believe that was Fratsky who got the goal. Yep, off to Tara Phillips' corner at 11.31 in the match. Now Cantwell will retreat into her own zone for Boone Grove. Good job of settling it down. Looking again for Martinez. It gets through the defense on the play, but the senior leader, Marissa Sosa, is right there, and she gets it back to Hanson, and now they'll regroup. Spinorama move now by Eden. Ground ball attack to Fratsky with 9.16 remaining in the half. Off the right side now to Rife. Back to Fratsky. Good give and go back to Rife. She comes now in into the 18. Good defensive play and a physical play as well by number 20, 26, I believe, was that Wolf. No, that was Martinez, I think. The guy there, Sarah Martinez, the sophomore. Boy, Sarah, along with uh, Emily, the dynamic duo of the Martinez, is doing a great job out here this, today. And able to knock it off of Katie Reef. So you got to make that split to se se second decision in soccer. When you enter the box, you want to think about shooting because the defenders were closing on her really quickly. Yeah, that was a great job by Sarah. And also it was a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder contact, so she didn't draw the card there. 8.30 remaining here in the half. Eden trying to gain control here. Good job in that midfield support by Boone Grove. Sarah Brown, the sophomore, number 15. one nothing lead for the Bearcats. They're going to call a handball on the Bearcats. And now Boone Grove, moving from right to left on your laptop, will go with the free kick here. And uh, as we mentioned, moving with the wind at the back now, eight minutes. That, that, that will continue before it's halftime, and obviously they switch sides of the field. Yeah, so the uh, Wolves will definitely uh, have their backs to the wall with a one-goal deficit if they can't put anything here with the win in the second half. McCafferty now with a nice crowner on the play. Centering pass is knocked down by Hansen for the Bearcats. 
Good job of uh, back checking there by Heinold, the freshman. But now McCafferty runs out of real estate off the far side. It'll be a throw in for the Bearcats. In a weird, in a weird way, it may actually be an advantage to be going against the wind because maybe Boone Gross thinking, oh, we'll have opportunities. We have the wind at our back. And sometimes, uh, you know, that can play against you. And, uh, you know, you think you have the advantage. Perhaps Wheeler may think they have the advantage if they have a one nothing lead at halftime. Like, oh, we have the wind at our back. And so we'll see if uh, Brian Murray tells them, hey, you don't have the advantage even with that. Yeah, you uh, get a little bit of complacent out there when Mother Nature's on your side, and we've seen it too where it'll be blowing strong for a half, and then you come out for the second half, and things have changed. Ball knocked up the elevator shaft by Hansen to the far side, and again, a line violation on Wheeler results in a wool throw-in as Allie Hill will go off the far side. We're down to 6.45 remaining in the half. If you're just joining us, a goal at 11.31 off the foot on the play of Lauren Fratsky. Give the assist to Tara Phillips on the corner. Now McCafferty got a half a step, comes into the box on the play. She could have pulled the trigger there, and the Bearcats were able to get to the ball like a magnet to metal on that one. And in that situation there, I think Olivia would have been uh, well advised to go ahead and pull the trigger. Well, she had a left-footed chance there. Who knows if it would have gotten through the defense, but that's that split-second decision I'm talking about. you got to... Make it just like that if you want to uh, get an opportunity. Hansen now having some difficulty from Martinez. Get some help from Sosa. Now back to the midfield third to Samantha Wolf. Looking for Olivia McCafferty. spin a move. Trying to do a double move. And Crowder's not buying it. What a great job by Maddie Crowder that time. And she got some midfield help as well. Kelly Fry now doing the tightrope walk on the far side. Putting on the afterburners. Bearcats are trying to come on a counter, but a nice job of back-checking by Allie Hill, the sophomore, throwing Wheeler. Coming up on five and a half remaining here in the first half of play. Fry knocks it down, but the Wolves have the counter now as they bring it back up through the midfield circle for Sarah Brown. Beautiful sun splash day here in Union Township. Wheeler Bearcats trying to go to double-digit victories for the second consecutive year under Brian Murray. Good job by Martinez as she gets hawked out there by Tara Phillips. Martinez retreats. She avoids the corner. Throw in Wheeler. Coming now to the bewitching hour here. The last five minutes of the half where the mental and physical fatigue starts to take its toll. And you don't want to give up that second goal here as that centering pass goes behind the goal, resulting in a goal kick here for Mickey Boatwright and Boone Grove. And the Wheeler High School Boys and Girls Soccer Booster Club, as well as the high school, are proud supporters of the Bearcats in their quest for a Northwest Indiana Soccer Conference championship and postseason success. Special thanks go out to Ty Eaton and the rest of the Wheeler soccer community for their support of today's broadcast. Canwell now got it taken away on the play by Lanny Eaton, but her shot is again errant off the far side as again number 11 Katie Reif on that right wing, Brendan, trying to sneak in there behind Boatwright. Yeah, well, Lanny Eaton uh, did make that split to set, second decision to take a shot outside the box there, and you know, that went behind the net, but at least you got the opportunity there. And that's all, all you ask sometimes of uh, soccer players. Just get uh, get a chance to get something yeah. on frame. Give it a chance. You never know. 3.46 remaining here in the first half of play. Spin around the move by McCafferty. She tries to go through a Bearcat sandwich, and now she'll retreat into the midfield area to Hessling. Centering pass is tipped now. Kraus is there. And now the Bearcats finally able to settle it down, but they get it intercepted on the play by Sarah Brown for the Wolves. There's that gap there in between the midfield and the strikers for Boone Grove that they have not been able to fill as McCafferty's been marked up nicely by the Bearcat defense. Well, Boone Grove, I think they're uh, really uh, retreating on defense here. Their uh, midfielders really aren't helping out the forwards maybe as much as they could. And, you know, just putting pressure on the Wheeler defense in their own zone could make a difference in more opportunities. Midfield area now on the play. Spin around the move. Nicely done by Shannon Eden. Number 10. 
Ground ball attack off the right side for Kelly Fry. Fry coming in on the box, trying to get by Cantwell on the plate. She did get her right foot on it to the far side. Unfortunately for the Bearcats, Rife was cutting in, and the pass went out. Now picked back up by Lanny Eaton. Here's her shot in the play and a save by Mickey Boatwright. Picked up by Michaela Boatwright. Another opportunity there for Wheeler, and I just noticed that the last play at midfield, Allie Hill was the um, – midfielder that had it. The forwards were up there, but all the other midfielders retreated back on defense, and uh, maybe to be aggressive and get a goal, you do kind of want to help out your midfield and attack the other team's zone. Now picked up by Tara Phillips. Phillips outside the 18, trying to get the right foot free. Good job defensively by Martinez again back there, as she got in there along with Cantwell. And uh, again, number one, number double ones, Rachel Cantwell, the sophomore, with a nice defensive play. 50-50 ball by Sosa, knocked away nicely on the play by Martinez. Marissa does a good job of countering. Now Martinez trying to get through a Bearcat sandwich, and again, Wheeler doing a great job of back-checking and the offensive third for Boone Grove. Down to 135 remaining now in the first half of play. Olivia McCafferty now, that's been a matchup with Crowder that's been going on all afternoon long. Centering pass, looking for Martinez. Knocked down by Sosa in the midfield third. It's going to be a throw-in for the Wolves. And now uh, Chad uh, Rago will go to the bench. Kraus will come out of the ball game. And they will come back in here on the near sideline with Emily Barton, Emily number 28, Barton. the freshman. Wolf now for the Boone Grove Wolves. Back to the far side on the play. One minute. Going to be a free kick opportunity now for the Wolves off the foul. Less than a minute remaining here in the half. They're obviously in good position, so you want to take advantage of this if you are the Wolves. Allie Hill now will be in the midfield area, and the sophomore with the free kick as the Bearcats set up the wall. Here's her shot. she got some good pace on it, but it goes over the crossbar on the shot. But some nice pace on that ball, Brennan. Yeah, good, uh, good opportunity there and a good shot, just a little bit too hard. So Christy Hansen now will go with the goal kick as uh, Katie Bohr will let her, Spohr will let her go ahead with the free kick. Down to 22 seconds remaining here in the half. Here's the kick on the plate, tip by Crowder back to the midfield third. Hill trying to get something going 50-50 now with 12 seconds remaining. Centering pass is chipped out of there defensively. Now Fratsky now with seven seconds remaining. Now he got time as a factor, only three seconds remaining. Got to try to get something on frame. And the sands of the hourglass are going to run out here on the Wolves and the Bearcats. I think we learned last week, Mike, that you needed to have the ball in the back of the net as the buzzer went off. Yes, we found that out in that last second washout of the goal that went in. And uh, good point, Brendan. In that ball game, the ball was not entirely over the goal line when the time ran out in the half, and was disallowed. So we have played 40 minutes of action here at Union Township at Wheeler High School. The score is the Wheeler Bearcats 1 and the Boone Grove Wolves nothing. And Reader's Auto Service Center reportage has been family-owned and operated for 50 years. They feature award-winning and complete auto service and repair, including air conditioning, brakes, suspension, computerized alignment, and engine diagnostics. They're also state certified in admissions and 24-hour towing is available. Their auto technicians are ASC certified with access to the latest technologies in diagnostic equipment. Stop by their facility that includes 10 mechanical bays and a Vaveline Express Care for fast and friendly service. The front office includes a big screen television, cappuccino machine, and a slushy machine. Readers is located at 6436 Central Avenue in Portage, or give them a call today at 219-763-1782. Brendan, uh, give us your impressions of the first half. I'm going to check up with Jacob here and see how he's doing. All right, well, Miller, I think, has had the ball at the Boone Grove end more, and the ball, the um, opportunities have spent been more for Wheeler as most of the half, you'd say they've won the time of possession or the opportunities. Uh, it'd be interesting for me to see if Boone Grove moves up their midfielders to the offensive attacking interest with pressure on the Wheeler defense and midfielders when they're in their own zone and see if they get more opportunities from that because they've only had the forwards up there and you really 
you're, if you're going three forwards against four or five defenders and midfielders, you really have to get a perfect ball on a perfect running player and in a perfect angle to try to get a shot off. And that's really, really hard in any level of soccer. And really, they've only, Boone Grove has only really had one opportunity, and that was at the very end with a free kick by Allie Hill that just went over the goal. And so, one nothing lead here with 7.45 to go in the first half. Halftime, both teams are huddling, and, you know, it's, for me, halftime, it's just an opportunity to rest a little bit. I don't think either team will really change its strategy other than we'll see if Boone Grove attacks or moves their midfielders up and tries to get some more opportunities offensively. But don't think we'll see many adjustments from Wheeler. We'll see if they retreat more defensively. I think that would be a bad move. I think that they shouldn't make very many adjustments. It's gotten them opportunities and gotten them a goal in the first half. And even though the wind will now be against them, you really don't want to change your strategy here. So I don't think Ryan Murray will do that. And, uh, you know, just tell the team to keep attacking and try to wear down Boone Grove a little bit here. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. So uh, they, uh, I've had a bit, uh, it's recording I've been running recording. better this the morning. Is so probably had their coffee and all ready to go. Now, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna put him in three. Maybe there's a problem with pot two, but I'm I'm seeing it on the remote mix. So not really much going on. I like. All right, I'm gonna change him into three. So stay, stay on the ball. They need the rest more than anything. They looked a little tired at the end of the first half. Whereas Peter has some players standing. I'm gonna change you over here a little bit, Brandon. We've got a uh, technical issue here. Okay. Over here and see if this thing works out a little bit better. All right. Um, Pardon me. Make sure we get this. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, a situation there, Brendan, where the uh, the first half of play. Uh, good job by Wheeler going against the win and getting the ball on the corner. Well, as I as I say, um, they they played with the ball more at Boone Grove's end. Uh, yeah, how about now? How about and uh, you know, Boone Grove. Really got to try to attack more at Wheeler's end, obviously. You know, that's the time of possession thing, okay, and you I get more opportunities. Up, but I mean, have the ball more. It's, it's reporting on the obviously, reports. what they're going to have to try to do here to tie the game and uh, perhaps take the lead here in the second half. Yeah, not much longer. It's, 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 it's past 12 it, it o'clock. It is what it is. It's a yeah. uh, nice sunny day as it's uh, turning out. Maybe it'll hit 70 this morning. But uh, the sun has crept out. We'll see, uh, we get more into the midday of the boys' soccer game here. If that sun becomes a factor. No, I like it. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just frustrated. Kind of um, as the day goes on, you really right, I'll try a little more time in the afternoon. The mornings are actually uh, like no, doing athletic as a track runner, but I like uh, doing things in the morning because uh, once you wake up and your adrenaline's flowing because you've already woken up, you can really get some things done before the sun comes up. And well, those track meets in high school, they lasted all day, so getting the first event in and then, geez, I'd have to sit for the whole day and try to stay cool and it's my mind broken. I'm going to try and do that side. Okay. Speak up. 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 Insurance. Wow. Reader's Auto Service Center of Portage has been family owned and operated for 50 we years. Have a for the 50 they feature award winning and complete auto the service of kit and repair, including air conditioning, brakes, suspension, computerized alignment, and engine, engine diagnostics. 
They are also state certified. Any mission within 24 hour towing is available. Their auto technicians are ASE certified. With access to the latest technologies and diagnostic equipment, stop by their facility that includes 10 mechanical bays and a Valvoline Express care for fast and friendly service. Front office includes a fixed television, cafeteria machine, and slushy machine. This is located at 6436 Central Avenue in Portage, or you can call them today at 219-763-1782. And I guess you're just going to go with all mic and not even be able to hear. Okay, there we go. All right, let's do that. And we can switch here and try to talk. Oh, now that's that's not good either. Winning number is eight all right, six all right, all right. two. I think we've got a three bill. I'll shoot the text in a couple minutes to get it all set up. So we are here at halftime. It is a one to nothing lead for the Wheeler Bearcats in this matchup against the Boone Grove Wolves. Mike Knezovich along with Brendan Marshall here. The goal coming at 11:31 in the match. And it came off the uh, corner kick. Nice job by uh, Tara Phillips as she was able to get it into the middle area on the play. And then uh, get the ball into the net. One, uh, four, by the charge here, Lauren eight, Bratz, six, three, uh, Bratz picking up uh, goal number one, nine. Four, uh, you're holding it in those tickets. Uh, please report the front box. Off the corner. That's a terrific job there by the Bearcats. And our last scout goes to get your position to do that. And now we'll uh, have six, an opportunity one, with the wind here coming three, up. Two, in the second half of play. Keep in mind that uh, after this uh, first ball game, we'll be uh, flipping it over on the boys' side of things here on RRSN.com as the uh, Wheeler boys will be taking on the uh, Bloom Grove boys in a ball game. There you go, Brendan. Let's try that one. All right, so I have a uh, directional directional boom mic facing right in my mouth. I can't I don't have a headset anymore, so I can still hear you, Mike. All right. That sounds good. <laughs> that sounds good. And uh, we'll go with this here now in the second half of play as both teams coming back on to the pitch as the Boone Grove Wolves uh, now will uh, try to go against that wind, which is coming out yeah, of the west at about uh, 15 to 20 miles an hour here today. See, I'm telling you, it's not the council. It's the, it's the wiring wire. Yeah, like the halftime adjustments uh, that I really only that I talked about at halftime that I really only see being made is we'll see if the Boone Grove midfielders move up more into the offensive zone to try to give their team more chances in the second half and try to keep it at the Wheeler zone. Nothing to get those chances. That's really the only adjustment I saw for Wheeler. Well, that makes sense. Then. I don't really say change much just keep attacking like they are you know even though the wind's going against you now just keep attacking how you are and should be hopefully good to go maybe they can get another goal here and try to take that two advantage lead in the second half which is a pretty big, big advantage the wheeler bearcats uh right now are on a uh, three game actually a four game unbeaten streak they tied lowell nil nil beat uh Couts on a shutout beat the Hanover Central 5-1, and then a shutout over Covenant Christian. So defensively, they really uh, uh, bolting down things pretty good here in uh, this particular part of the season, which you want to be playing your best soccer at this particular point in time. And Amy Guerrero, who did not start the game and I don't think played in the first half for Boone Grove, is now in the middle kicking, kicking off here. So we'll see it. That uh, forward combination of McCafferty, Martinez, and Guerrero well, that usually time. starts yeah, for the Grove can get an opportunity. Yeah, so a new uh, 40 minutes on the clock as we get set for the second half of action. The teams have changed ends here. The Wheeler Bearcats now moving from right to left on your radio uh, dial and laptop. The Boone Grove Wolves in the opposite direction. Thanks again to Jacob for doing a great job on the camera work out here for us this afternoon as the ball now into the midfield third. So Mickey Boatright is now to our immediate left for the Wolves. Katie Spohr in between the pipes for Wheeler to our immediate right. And again, this broadcast today is brought to you by Wheeler High School as well as the Wheeler Boys and Girls High School Soccer Booster. Special thanks again to Ty Eaton along with uh, coaches Brian Murray, David Bach, and the Wheeler soccer community for their support of the Bearcats. They wish the Bearcats best of luck in their quest for a Northwest Indiana Soccer Conference Championship and postseason success. 
Crossover dribbling ability now by Sam Wolf. Centering pass looking for the newly inserted Guerrero. And a nice job by Emily Jackson to tip it out of the box. Now back to the 18. Jackson miss hits it on the play. Again, good midfield support now by Shannon Eden and the Bearcats. They'll clear it quickly down to Boone, Boone Grove Wolf territory. It's now going to be a throw in off the far side for the Wheeler Bearcats. Tara Phillips will do the honors. Centering pass on the play. Midfield third. Knockdown as Kelly Fry tried to get something going. It'll be another throw in for the Bearcats and Tara Phillips. She's got the assist in the ball game on the corner kick earlier. Now Shannon Eaton over to Lanny Eaton. Eaton centering pass now at the 18. Knocked down at the defense. Here's a one-timer on the play just past the near post by Fratsky. Didn't seem like she could really get the turn on it there, Brennan. Yeah, just couldn't, get the, just couldn't get the foot angle there to get a straight shot there. Just kind of went off the side of the foot. But, yeah, tough shot against uh, See, great great defender Macy Grove, Miller, the senior. Sure one of the few starting seniors on Boone Grove. Amy Guerrero, who just came into the game, is the third starting senior that they have out there. So probably good to have her back and get some stability there, the senior leadership. Throw in on the near side for Wheeler. And a chance here for Fratsky on the left side, crossing into the middle, but a ground ball right to Michaela Boatwright. Easy save there. You're down to 37-27 remaining here in the match. one nothing lead, Brendan, and a situation here where uh, we would go to overtime because this is a conference game here. Okay, well, that's... Uh... Good to good to good to hear. I guess you know you don't. I'm not a big fan of ties personally. Yep, let's uh, let's corner settle it on the pitch, and now we've got a corner kick here for the Bearcats. Well, okay, I like ties to wear, but not to involve ball, ball games to uh, decide outcomes here. That's Phillips on the far side, Brendan. Here's Sarah Phillips with another corner kick, and this one will be defended and. Kind of, kind of cleared out there, but right back to Phillips in the middle of the box and in there for a goal. That's a score by number off 11. the foot of Katie Reef as Katie she was Reif being knocked the down score. by the goalie Michaela Boatwright, but Reef able to get it by her for a two nothing Wheeler Bearcats lead. Sure, so with the assist. that two goal lead that you get in the second half, really big advantage there for Wheeler and Boone Groves got to. Now try to get one quickly here to get down by only one goal. Reef with the goal on the play. That's her fourth of the season. The freshman doing a great job now. As, uh, she's come off the, uh, the bench here. She's been in and out of the lineup, and she gives the Bearcats that two-goal cushion. Well, she's been open on the far side a few times, at least in the first half, and now she finally got an opportunity with the pass in the middle. There she is again. Here on the near side, she runs into a defender, keeps on going. Fratsky setting her up in the middle. Reef, crossover, but it's going to be cleared by Cantwell. Over to the near side. Fratsky able to pick it back up. Go where she really wants to go, but kicks it ahead and out of bounds. But she wasn't really challenged there by... The Wolves' defense. Amherst Asylum at 20, 228 South 500 West in Valparaiso, Indiana, is 4.5 miles south of Route 30 on North County Road and 500 West. www.amherstasylum.com is the website for the uh, haunted attraction in Valparaiso. They're open Thursdays from 7 p.m. until 10 p.m., Friday from 7 p.m. until 11, as well as on Saturdays. Thursdays from 7 p.m. until 10 p.m. They're open on select dates from October 4th through November 1st. You can get $2 off with the card that we've got here on site at Wheeler High School in today. That's the Amherst Asylum Haunted Attraction in Valparaiso. And now ball finally being kicked into the Wheeler end, if only for a second. And here comes Kelly Fry on the far side. Kelly Fry gets past the defender, looks to the middle, and that is Shannon Eden with a ground ball that's defended well. And then kept out, kicked out of there by Boone Grove. Kicked ahead to Martinez and good defense. Uh, looks like Mar Marissa Sosa over there on the far side. Ahead to Kelly Fry. Fry looking to the middle. It's behind 
the player, but Blaney Eaton able to get it. Now it's ahead to Tara Phillips in the middle. Eden with a high pop-up just yeah, over the far side, and I think it went over the fence, so they're going to need to get a new ball, and she Sarah gets two Martinez. of them. 34-16 remaining here in regulation. 2 nothing lead now for the Wheeler Bearcats. A goal at 11:31 in the match by Lauren Fratsky off the assist from Tara Phillips. And then a great job by Katie Reif, the freshman, to get her fourth of the season from the midfield third. And there is Fratsky attacking the defense again as they put the pressure on. Get the steal. Reif with a left-footed shot off the body of Sarah Martinez, and it will be a throw-in on the near side. Kick for the Bearcats. Yep, corner kick is what they called it. Went out of bounds Number 20, Lauren on Fratsky the baseline. So Fratsky will try to kick it in here as everybody's back defensively for Boone Grove in their zone. See if they can check everybody for Wheeler here. And nice high ball, but it's uh, over the head of everybody and will go out of bounds and will be Boone a Grove. goal kick. Reader's Auto Service Center of Portage has been family-owned and operated for 50 years. They feature award-winning and complete auto service and repair, including air conditioning, brakes, suspension, computerized alignment, and engine diagnostics. They are state-certified in emissions, and 24-hour towing is available. Their auto technicians are ASE certified with access to the latest technologies in diagnostic equipment. Stop by their facility that includes 10 mechanical bays and a Valvoline Express care for fast and friendly service. Front office includes a big screen television, cappuccino machine, and a slushy machine. Readers is located at 6436 Central Avenue in Portage, or you can call today at 219-763-1782. Ball off the uh, far side on the play by the uh, Wheeler Bearcats, resulting in a Boone Grove throw-in. <laughs> a flip and a throw in. That was pretty cool. I don't know if that did much, but it's going to be kicked out of there by Katie Reef and then ahead to Tara Phillips, who will control it at the midline. Get it back to Reef. Reef ahead now to Frasky. Has Reef open on the far side, but there's defenders in the way, four of them, and it'll be taken by Martinez. Kicked back over to Wheeler. Now it's Eden being defended well by Boone Grove and then kicked over and out of bounds. 31-47 <coughs> remaining here in regulation. 2 nothing lead for the Wheeler Bearcats in this matchup as Wheeler trying to get their 10th win of the season. And uh, they've been doing a great job. Katie Reif with the, uh, with the big insurance goal there after the goal at 11.31 early in the match. Bratsky's going to set up Reif in the middle. Two defenders were there, but Reif will get it over on the far side. And it'll be a throw-in for Wheeler. Thrown in over to the corner, and that's Bratsky. Getting it back, and it's defended well by Macy Miller. And out of bounds for another throw-in. Now in the middle, Eaton. Going to be cleared out. Back to Eaton. And then turning as uh, Olivia McCafferty back on defense, the forward to defend that one. But it's taken right back by Katie Reif. Over to the side to Fratsky. Cross into the offside, middle, and an offside is going to be called on Wheeler. Yeah, the student athletes really are confused here, as are we, because there's a football game being played right behind us. So there's whistles going on in that ball game, and sometimes they think there's an offside call, but it's actually the football game being played uh, just a little bit uh, north of us. I'm glad you mentioned that because the whistles confused me in the first half. Yes, they have. They've been kind of coming during the course of the game, so you really have to kind of watch the officials and the arm signals. Cafferty had the ball in the middle. That one is kicked off the referee and goes right to Wheeler in the middle. Eden over to the far side. It's Fry. And Fry will control it, get it back into the 18, get knocked down, and then they are going to let the goalie get it. Kale and Boatwright with that ball. So everybody will clear out as she gets set to kick it there. Good job by Cantwell to communicate with her goalkeeper there on that situation to make sure that there was no confusion in the box. And nobody really running here for 
either team to get out of that zone. Now back to Fratsky in the middle. She's got Rife. Rife has a left-footed shot if she wants it. There it is on the crossing, and it hits the outside of the net. Shot just wide by number and 11. goes out of play for a goal Katie kick. Rife. So a Katie, good opportunity there. Katie Rife with her fourth goal of the season. Uh, that goal coming uh, in the second half here and, and giving the Bearcats a little bit of a breather. Way. As now they are going to substitute here as the Wolves are going to send Macy Miller to the bench. And coming in will be double deuce for them. And uh, we'll try to get a name on that one. As again, that's another player that the number changed on us. Shauna Greenway. Shauna Greenway gets the action there. Thank you very much. She was 19 and 31 on our roster. And now she's 22. So third time's a charm. <laughs> Kicked ahead to McCafferty. McCafferty has it on the near side. Has a chance here with a side ball and just a little bit over the goal. She had a Shot just she had high. a chance there. And she could have gotten it to the far side Number of the goal. Not, not a great angle, yeah, but a chance. Boy, that uh, I think she could have maybe dribbled a little bit closer to the six there towards the middle of the field. Is now exiting will be Elizabeth Martin for Boone Grove, and coming in will be Megan Jordan, the sophomore for Boone Grove. Well, hindsight is 2020. 20 you got to take advantage of a good shot when you have it. Now, Allie Hill will control the ball in midfield as their midfielders are on the offensive end. And now over to the side, that is Samantha Wolf. And it'll be taken out of bounds by Marissa Sosa. 27-53 remaining here in regulation. 2 to nothing lead for the Wheeler Bearcats in this girls' soccer match. And the men's soccer match coming up next as the... Boone Grove men are starting to warm up on the far side of the field. You see some people running. In the in the box, a good chance again for McCafferty. He's got a left-footed chance and just outside the net. Shot just wide. Great so control of the ball Olivia by Olivia to McCafferty. He has 12 goals and 11 assists on the year, but just wide. Amherst Asylum at 228 South 500 West in Valparaiso is 4.5 miles south of Route 30 on North County Road and 500 West. You can check them out on the web at www.amherstasylum.com. That's www.amherstasylum.com. Their hours are 7 to 10 on Thursdays as well as 7 to 11 on Friday and Saturday. Dates are open right now from October 4th through November the 1st. And if you come out here to the game, you can get a $2 off coupon with this card. And Amherst Asylum, haunted attraction in Valparaiso. Free kick into the box, but it'll be cleared out by Wheeler for only a second. Guerrero gets it over to the far side for Alley Hill, but it will be kicked out of bounds by the Wolves. So Bearcats will throw it in here, have a uh, three on four coming up here. Pass ahead to Fratsky. She's got a one-on-two, but good space right outside the 18. And it's a goal right on the near side of the post. 3 nothing. A great shot by Fratsky right at the 18. 18 foot line and great ball there. 3 nothing. 26-16 to go in this one. So going to be tough now for Boone Grove. They've really got to attack now. 53-46, the official time of the score. So Fratsky picks up her second goal of the afternoon. She's got eight, her eighth and ninth tallies of the season. And uh, now Boone Grove really going to have to start uh, bringing some midfielders up to try to avoid the shutout here. Ball kicked back to the Boone Grove end. And now uh, finally cleared by 22. And ahead and out of bounds. Nope, taken away by Guerrero. Guerrero's got a chance and she's got some teammates right in the middle. Pass ahead and a good job by the freshman Katie Spore to go out there and slide, get the ball. Yeah, she did, did not hesitate. That's what you want to keep her to do. If you're going to make the decision to come out, make it and win it. Do not lose a 50-50 ball at the six. That'll be thrown in right at midfield. Ahead to... Emma, Emma Heinhold, and now it's going to be thrown in by the Wolves. Back on the Wheeler Bearcats end, and they will try to clear it on the throw-in. 
And that will be kicked out of bounds. And again, it'll be a Wheeler throw in right in front of me. And good throw in once again Head to Tara Phillips. It'll be taken away by Allie Hill and controlled off the foot of Emma Einhold. She will get it into the middle. Bratsky with another chance, and this time a great save by Michaela Boatwright right at the top of her reach. Yeah, she used all of her frame on that one, Brendan, right underneath the crossbar, and Bratsky bidding for the hat trick out here this afternoon was inches away of doing so. Got a high ball on her end will stay as Wheeler will attack. Tara Phillips over to the far side. We'll get to the ball first and try to break free. Gets it right in the middle, and just missing the ball was Kelly Fry. Uh, it'll be kicked out of bounds, and Wheeler will retain the possession on the throw in. 24 11 to go in this one. 3 0 Wheeler. As now Boone Grove will try to attack here. McCafferty being chased by Emily Jackson. McCafferty gets it ahead to Guerrero, and that'll be kicked out of bounds by Maddie Crowder. Throw in on the near side for the Wolves. 23-57 remaining in the match. We were up three to nothing. Two goals by Lauren Bratsky and one by Katie Rice in this ball game. And now we've got some more substitutions coming in for the Bearcats. Kayla Saronis will come in for the Wolves. Rachel Metzger in for the Bearcats, as you mentioned. That ball will be kicked into the box and a chance. For 13, that is Martinez right in the middle. Allie Hills on support, but good job by the Bearcat defense to get it out of there and get it ahead to Tara Phillips. She'll lose the 50-50 ball to Cantwell, but it's kicked ahead again to Phillips, chased by Cantwell. Off Phillips' foot if it goes out of bounds. It will not. Phillips will save it. Cantwell over to the side again. A physical match there. Ball's still not up, out of bounds. And now kicked back to Fratsky in support. And now kicked out of bounds by Boone Grove, number 15, Sarah Brown. Back in for the Bearcats, number 10, Shannon Eaton. Shannon Eaton and Katie Wright. They're getting some rest. We'll come back into the game. They are midfielders. Wright's a freshman, Eaton a junior. Wright had a goal earlier in the second half to put... Wheeler up 2 nothing. They now lead 3-0. And at midfield, Emily Martinez will control it for a second, but it will be thrown in by Wheeler. And the balls ahead will be taken by Cantwell. And she will just get out of bounds. Tara Phillips. An easy throw in right in front of her. Now a kick into the box for Fratsky off her foot and will be a goal kick for Boone Grove. The uh, Bearcats, uh, to their credit, Brandon, are not laying back and resting on their laurels up three to nothing here halfway through the second half. They're continuing to put the heat on offensively. Well, we talked about those halftime adjustments and Wheeler not really making any, just set, just uh Brian Murray probably telling them just keep attacking, and so far, as you say, they haven't gotten two goals out of it, and they want more. Ball still not cleared out by Boone Grove. Now Allie Hill will dribble it and get it into the middle for McCafferty. McCafferty will get it ahead to 24, and that will be kicked out of bounds. 24 is... Somebody. It's got a number change, but uh, anyway. Be kicked out of there, cleared by Wheeler. And now into the middle, that is Sarah Brown with a big kick in there, but it'll be taken by Katie Spore. Yeah, Megan Jordan, I think, is 24 there, Brendan, so we'll uh, keep her in mind here. we got to get you a uh, numerical change. So, that, yes, that is uh, Megan Jordan. She is a sophomore. You might want to jot that in there. I will do that. While the game goes on right in front of me, and a tripping foul is going to be called on Wheeler. So just joining us, uh, two goals by uh, by um, 
Lauren Fratsky, her eighth and ninth of the season. A beautiful corner kick by Tara Phillips, picking up the assist on one of those at 11:31, And then uh, a great job by Reif on the wing, picking up her fourth goal year. She picked up a ball loose in the midfield third. Now being controlled by Martinez in the middle, but taken back by Wheeler. And out to Shannon Eden at midfield. Kick back to the Boone Grove end, or Wheeler end. And midfield 50-50 ball, good hitter by or good header by Eden, but a foul is going to be called on her. So a free kick for the Wolves. With now 19.27 to go in this one, Wolves are trailing 3-0. Wind is still coming out there for the for the Bearcats, Brendan. Uh, Boom Grove going right into the middle of about a 20-mile-an-hour wind coming in from the east. And a shot by Martinez will be bounced, and a good job by Katie Spore to get to it. And Katie Spore now will throw it. It will be intercepted by Jordan Martin or Guerrero in the middle, but cleared for the second. Allie Hill now has it, but... Fratsky will control it in the middle. She's got a four on three, but people are hustling on the offensive end for Wheeler. And they have a chance here, but the ball will roll a little bit too far and be controlled by Sarah Martinez. She will left foot it out of there and out of bounds over the Wheeler bench. So the game throw it in that area. 18.30 now, time starting to run out here for the Wolves as they're going to again go for some more substitution, get some fresh troops in there. Jordan exits the lineup, and back in on the wing for the Wolves on the play is going to be Emily Barton, the freshman, number 28, and also back in as well as Macy Miller, number 8, the senior. Kelly Fry in as well. She crossed one into the middle. It'll be taken by Reef. Reef tried to turn around there, didn't really have control. This ball still in the zone, right by the 18, Reef. And now being controlled and dribbled out. Good support by Emily Jackson to get it back into the middle for Wheeler. And a chance for Shannon Eden. Has a left-footed chance here, now dribbling around. Nobody breaking open, Reef. And it will be controlled by Martinez. Back to Eden. Eden with the turnaround and a kick into the middle for Fry. Cleared out by Hill for a second. Reef with the header as well. Fry. And a chance here for Katie Reef. She's got a left foot. Turn around. Defenders closed in on her nicely. But it's taken back by Kelly Fry, the sophomore. Still in the Boone Grove end. And now McCafferty, the forward, is just going to come back into the defense and dribble it up herself. McCafferty into the middle. And now McCafferty, I think, will be called for a foul here. She knocked down Lauren Fratsky. Nice uh, run there by McCafferty here up the near sideline on the play. Uh, Wheeler had the answer defensively, but she so showed some great speed here on the near touchline. 16-42 is what I believe that says. As a free kick is going to come up, the clock is ticking. Free kick going to be taken by Wheeler. And into the zone. Katie Reef chasing it down, but stays at the, the, game for the Bearcats, number Wheeler seven, end. Landon Eaton, and number 26 for Wolf. Landon Eaton is going to come Samantha back in. Wolf. Samantha Wolf as well. Wolf for the Wolves. Eaton for the Bearcats. Throwing in the middle. Allie Hill will control it and dribble it. Kick it ahead. Controlled by the defense of Wheeler. Christy Hansen is number one. And now intercepted in the middle. McCafferty will get it outside to Emily Barton, the freshman. A head back to McCafferty at the 18. She's double teamed and kicked away by Crowder. Here comes Reef dribbling it up herself. Reef threw a few defenders. will kick it ahead. And looks like Bogright's going to take this one. 
Today's game is also brought to us by the great folks over at Gauchos. We want to thank them. They're right off of US 30 here, just uh, uh, directly south here of Wheeler High School. And they've got a Saturday special coming up. That's the Surf and Turf Early Dinner. That's available from 2 p.m. until 5 p.m. Uh, you must be sat by 4 p.m. It's $19.95 over at Gauchos. It includes shrimp, perch, top sirloin, pork tenderloin, and chicken parmesan. Also includes 35 item gourmet food bar as well. That's over here in Gauchos, just off of Route 30 here, right by Wheeler High School in Union Township. And he stopped just in time for a throw-in by... Looks like a little throw, throw in here on the throwing. near side. 1440 remaining in this one. 3 0 Wheeler with the lead. McCafferty will get it to Hill, and now Hill will take it back and kicked ahead. Tried to get it to Guerrero in the middle, but the Wheeler defense was there. The throw is going to be made by the Wolves. 14 18 to go. And the flip throw in once again, pretty good one. But it's going to come back to number 11. And be kicked out of bounds. Throw in now by Kelly Fry. 14 minutes remaining in this one now as that throw in is going to go a little bit too far and go over the goal line. The phone number, by the way, for Gaucho's Brazilian Steakhouse is 219-759-1100 for reservations. That's 219-759-1100. There's always something special going on at Gaucho's Brazilian Steakhouse here in Valparaiso. I think uh, Rachel Cantwell, who's number 11 for Boone Grove, is my new favorite player for that flip throw-in. It's pretty cool, I think. Yeah, I remember one, uh, one of the girls from Lake Central did that a few years ago, just a way for them to get a little bit more power into the throw from a, a distance on the sideline. And you get to flip. What's wrong with that? Absolutely. Have some fun while you're out there. <laughs> Katie Reif now will kick it into the middle, and a chance and a goal. A goal for Emma Einheld, the freshman, her fifth of the season, and that will put him up 4-0. 13-08 on to go. 13 to go in this one, and a good setup by Katie Reif, and Emma Heinhold got behind, and nothing Michaela Boatwright could really do about that one. 69-54 the time of the goal as Heinold now uh, gets on the Bearcat Parade. Katie Reif picks up her third point of the afternoon as she's got the goal and now an assist as she bids for our Centier Bank performer of the game for the Bearcats. So we talked about uh, what Wheeler's strategy was going to be here. Obviously, with that uh, wind at their back, definitely helped them, Brandon Marshall, but uh, they did not play a defensive second half here. They just decided to go right for the jugular, and mission accomplished. Yeah, I'm sure, Bri I'm sure Brian Miller told them to keep attacking at halftime. One goal is not really much of a lead, and now they've really advanced added the advantage to it, and now the thing for Boone Grove to do is try not to get shut out. I don't think they're coming back in this one. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, right now for the Bearcats, they are looking to get another shutout for their keeper, Katie Spore, and the freshman has done a great job. She's looking for her eighth shutout this year. Well, I think she'll give credit, rightfully so, to her defense. She really hasn't had much chances to save anything so far today and just as I say that she'll come out on a 50-50 ball and win it. She's had a few of those but really not uh, many good shots for Boone Grove in this one and I think a credit has to go to the Wheeler defense. Reader's Auto Service Center of Portage has been family owned and operated for 50 years. They feature award winning and complete auto service and repair including air conditioning, brakes, suspension, computerized Wheeler, alignment and 15, engine diagnostics. They're also state certified and admissions and 24 hour Sarah towing Brown. is available. Their auto technicians are ASC certified with access to the latest technologies in diagnostic equipment. Stop by their facility that includes 10 mechanical bays and a Valvoline Express care for fast and friendly service. The front office includes a big screen television, cappuccino machine, and a slushing machine. Readers is located at 6436 Central Avenue in Portage, or give them a call today at 219-763-1782. 
don't forget after this one, the boys game between Boudreaux and Wheeler. Still looking for a couple Sorry, of soccer doubleheader today to or this game, morning. A 50 50 ball at the Wheeler end. It's ultimately going to be won by Boone Grove as they'll throw it in. Allie Hill to nobody in particular, just trying to get it near the goal and get it back. Now Emily Martinez gets it at the 18, but it's taken out. And then Shad Meaden will get it over back to midfield. Now it's Emma Einhold. Einhold will try to get it outside. She will to number seven. That's Lanny Eaton. And it'll be kicked out of bounds off the defender, so Eaton will throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it in once they get a ball. And a good throw in ahead, but it's off the body of Emma Heinhold. Heinhold. Keep in mind, again, Gaucho's Brazilian Steakhouse right here just south of Wheeler High School, 219-759-1100. And you can check them out uh, today for the Saturday dining special that they have over at Gaucho's. And uh, also they've got special events. There's always something special happening over at Gaucho's Brazilian Steakhouse right here down the street from Wheeler High School, 219-759-1100. It can be the place to be the best in any field and there, there are no special promotions that set it apart from the rest of the pack. Well, Gaucho's distinguishes itself as the best restaurant in Valparaiso, Indiana, through many aspects, including having special offers on events and meals and dishes throughout the week. We got special offer for our patrons' birthdays as well. So when yours comes around, all you need to do is come in and uh, see what special deals we can give you with that authentic menu and Brazilian style met meals. It will recreate an experience you will never forget. That's Gaucho's Brazilian Steakhouse. There's always something special happening at Gaucho's. 219 759 1100. And they have to come back in eight days. I, I'm, I'm uh, turning six years old on next Sunday. There you go. You want that birthday special over at Gaucho's. There you go. 8.48 remaining in this one, a 4 nothing Wheeler lead. And now going to be controlled at midfield by Allie Hill and kicked ahead to McCafferty. McCafferty with a double move there gets around the defender. Has a chance in the middle for Guerrero over to the side for Emily Martinez, but a little bit too far on the lead pass. And a goal kick is going to be coming up with 8.23 remaining in this one. 4 nothing lead for the Wheeler Bearcats in the matchup. Katie Reif with a goal and assist. Lauren Fratsky with a couple of tickles of the twine. Tara Phillips with a corner kick setting up that first goal to get the Wheeler offense rolling. Fratsky's second goal right from the 18, just on the near side of the goalpost. An excellent, excellent kick there for a tally. 7.50 to go. Here comes the flip throw in. And a little bit too much, too much power on that one, but it's still cool. Allie Hill battling with 19 in the middle of the pitch there. Now going to be kicked by Cantwell. Over and out of bounds. Looks like it's going to be a throw in for Wheeler with seven and a half remaining in this one. Green shoes, Lenny Eaton. Can be intercepted for a second, but Eaton will get it back. Now back into the middle for Shannon Eaton. She'll get it to Heinold. Heinold dribbling in the middle, now trying to chase one down. Good defense by Sarah Martinez, and I think they're going to call a foul on Heinold. Sarah Martinez, along with uh, her sister out there, um, great job by Emily Martinez today, a freshman and a sophomore, have really stepped up for the Boone Grove Wolves out here today defensively. Now Emily spent most of the time in the Wheeler zone trying to get opportunities, like right here she has the ball, but it's taken away by 18. Sarah Bush, Sarah Bish, thank you very much. Controlled back into the end and now kicked out of there. Eden over to Heinold in the middle. 6.20 to go, Fratsky 
with the crossover. Has 24 on the near side here. That's going to be controlled ahead. Have a three on three. And it will be kicked out of bounds and will go to Wheeler. So a goal kick now for Katie Spore is again uh, Coach Murray going to go to the bench. Shannon Eden will get a well-deserved break Madison along with Stone. Lauren Fratsky as the two star players for the Bearcats come okay. out. And they will go to the bench Fugate. right now and they will number bring in number 16. That's Miranda Fugate. She is a defender out there and also number 23, Lindsay Duvall, a senior, in there now for the Bearcats. Yeah, you wonder if Fratsky and Eden are done for the morning. Let's throw in by Cantwell. And a good one, but a little bit too far for her teammates. And kicked out of bounds by Bish. So the Wheeler Bearcats, they're going to move to 10-1-1 one, one on the season here, Brendan. They will solidify their spot in the top 10 in the state in Class 1A girls soccer. And for the Boone Grove Wolves, it's going to be back to the uh, to the drawing board for Chad Ragow, Ragow and the um, Boone Grove Wolves as uh, they will try to right the ship up the next time out against the Holbert Brickies over at the Brickyard. Well, they do a high hold with a chance here, and she'll get a goal as it's just past for five, Michaela Boatwright, who came goal. out as it turned out a little bit too far, and now they're an extra point the away from into the Bearcats number 13, Olivia leading by Cook. a touchdown as that's 5 oh, nothing or 6 nothing. 5 nothing. 5 nothing. Excuse me. 75-08. On the goal for oh, Emma Heinel, the yeah, freshman, four, as Collins. she gets the tally. Her Number second goal in the no, last uh, six no, minutes no. of this match. She scored at 69-54, and then comes two, right back at 75-08. So now for Wheeler, Olivia Cook, and a few others are coming into the game. As looks like Brian Murray is going to get a chance to play everybody. Ball is going to be controlled at the Wheeler end by the Bearcats. And now here is Cook getting a chance. Has a left-footed chance, trying to get it past the defender, but Cantwell will kick it out of bounds. It'll be a throw-in for the Bearcats with four and a half remaining. Five-nothing, and Bearcats lead. And for Wheeler, number 22, Rachel Metzger. Rachel Metzger now, the sophomore. Coming into the match. The throw in will be towards her. Taken back as Haley Collins threw that one in. She's another substitute, number four, midfielder. And she'll get another chance with now four minutes remaining on this running clock. Cantwell tries to clear it. It goes off of the Wheeler player and then controlled by 15. And out of bounds. Looks like it'll be thrown in by Cantwell, so here comes the flip throw in once again. Reader's Auto Service Center Portage has been family-owned and operated for 50 years. They feature award-winning and complete auto service and repair, including air conditioning, brakes, suspension, computerized alignment, and engine diagnostics. They're also state certified and admissions and 24-hour towing is available. Their auto technicians are ASC certified with access to the latest technologies in diagnostic equipment. Stop by their facility that includes 10 mechanical bays and a Vaveline Express Care for Fast and Friendly Service. The front office includes a big screen television, cappuccino machine, and a slushy machine. Readers is located at 6436 Central Avenue in Portage. Or call today at 219-763-1782. Amy Guerrero about to take a corner kick here with 250 remaining. See if the uh, Wolves can get on the board. Trying to break the shutout here of Katie Spore. And again, another missed opportunity on a miss hit off a corner. Yep, just going behind the goal. So two and a half remaining. Uh, the guys' soccer team for Wheeler now starting to make its way to the area. Boone Grove's soccer team is already at the fence watching the action. Uh, so here comes Allie Hill. And it'll go out of bounds. Allie Hill will return the ball and then throw it in. Throw it into the middle. Wheeler had a chance at it, and now they will get it again as 16 dribbles it out of there, and a 
big kick ahead to Olivia Cook, but it'll be taken by Sarah Martinez. She'll dribble it over to the near, near side. The Wheeler throw in on the near side. Keep in, 42 go. Go ahead. Keep in mind, folks, the Saturday special over at Gaucho's Brazilian right, Steakhouse. It's surf and turf with the yearly deal available. Get seated by 4 o'clock. It's actually available from 2 to 5. You must be sat by 4 p.m. And the special is a 1995 deal. It includes steak, or shrimp, perch, top sirloin, as well as pork, a tenderloin, and chicken parmesan. It also includes 30, a 35-item gourmet food bar as part of that 1999 special. Uh, they also have uh, other discounts as well as free birthday uh, menus as well, meals for their guests. So stop in over in Valparaiso for fine dining over at Gaucho's Brazilian Steakhouse right here in Valparaiso, just south of Wheeler High School, 219-759-1100. 45 seconds remaining now as Boondro controls it at the Wheeler end. Wheeler trying to finish off the shutout. Ellie Hill, she gets to the ball. She'll have an open chance here. She crosses it into the middle. It's off the foot of Emily Martinez and taken by Katie Spore. Shot there by Allie Hill was at a tough angle there, but a good job by Spore to get back and hug that near post to preserve the shutout. 17 seconds remaining. It's Cantwell will dribble it out of there. Or kick it out of there. Brittany Moss now will get it ahead. Five seconds remaining. And it looks like they are going to preserve the shutout. For Katie Spore and take this one 5 nothing. Wheeler double-digit wins once again for Brian Murray. And a pretty impressive one in this one, if I do say so myself, Mike. Great job there. It's a uh, great job again by Lauren Fratsky, who picked up a couple goals in this ball game, her eighth and ninth of the year. Two goals for Emma Heinold, her fifth and sixth for the freshman, and assist as well for Tara Phillips, who's part of that dynamic duel up top. So Fratsky gets goals eight and nine. Phillips picks up assist number nine on the season. Katie Reif also playing a strong game as well, Brendan, as we get now a chance to name our Centier Bank performers of the game for both sides. What uh, what do you think? Yeah, I think this for uh, Wheeler, I'd say give it to Reif. She's created a lot of opportunities. She's been open as well, so could have had could have had some more opportunities, but uh, she's created some and. That'd be my player of the game on the Wheeler side. So we'll give it to Katie Wright. She's the freshman as she picks up goal number four in her first helper of the season. And for Boone Grove, uh, Brandon, I was very impressed out there with uh, number 13 for them, and that was their defender, Martinez. Well, Emily she... Martinez is actually their forward. Sarah right. Martinez. Sarah Martinez. 25 was their defender that uh, did stop some balls back there and give her team some chances. But uh, there could have, there were five goals, but yeah, there could have been more without uh, the presence of Martinez and Rachel Cantwell back there. So, so our center bank performers of the game for the Wheeler Bearcats will be Katie Reif. There, she's their freshman left midfielder with a goal and an assist today. And on the defensive side for the Boone Grove Wolves, Sarah Martinez, their sophomore, gets our center bank performer of the ball game for the Boone Grove Wolves. So with the win, the Wheeler Bearcats improved to 10-1-1 one one in the season. More importantly for them, they're now 6-0 in the Northwest Indiana Soccer Conference. And meanwhile, the Boone Grove Wolves, they will fall to 6-4 and four overall and 3-2 and two in the conference. Brennan, your final thoughts? Well, both teams are young teams. And Boone Grove is uh, obviously a learning experience. Got to come out, even, even if it is uh, morning and hard to wake up you got to come out and have a little bit more energy and I don't think uh, overall Boone Grove had that energy Wheeler was flying around the field and really I think uh, had better ball movement and got more chances because of that but uh, you know both teams are young teams and uh, Wheeler they can learn some they can learn something from this as well you know big win a good win but you got to keep going 
So we want to thank our sponsors that have helped us here with the live broadcast and the girls portion of our doubleheader. You can check out the boys portion coming up in a little bit here on rrsn.com. It's a separate link on the website, so you can check that out. Again, we want to thank the great folks over at Gaucho's Brazilian Steakhouse just south here of Wheeler High School on Route 30. You want to check out their Saturday specials for 19 99.95 on the special, and that is for shrimp, perch, top sirloin, along with pork tenderloin and chicken parmesan. 35 item gourmet food bar is also a part of that 19.95 special that goes from 2 to 5 on Saturdays. You must be sat by 4 p.m. over at Gaucho's Brazilian Steakhouse. That's 219-759-1100. We also want to thank the great folks over at Amherst Asylum. That's the haunted attraction located at 228 South 5500 West in Valparaiso. That's four point miles south of Route 30 on North County Road and 500 West. Check them out on the web at www.amherstasylum.com. Our great folks and friends over at Reader's Auto Service Center of Portage, located at 6436 Central Avenue in Portage. Give them a call today for all your auto needs at 219-763-1782. And we also want to thank Wheeler High School and the Wheeler Boys and Girls Soccer Boosters for their support all throughout the afternoon here in Union Township for these uh, games on the boys and girls side between Wheeler and Boone Grove. So for Brandon Marshall, this is Mike Knezovich saying so long for temporarily here from Wheeler High School. Keep in mind that we'll be discontinuing the stream here and then renewing it on rrsn.com. The link is right there for today, September the 21st, as we get set for game two of our doubleheader as the Wheeler boys take on the Boone Grove boys here on rrsn.com and regional radio sports. Have a terrific afternoon. We'll talk to you in a little bit, folks. Did you get a box of the